Welcome back guys. In this short video tutorial we'll be talking about one enzyme one one gene one enzyme hypothesis by uh, Biddle and Tatum and uh, Biddle and Tatum in 1942 they conduct a series of experiments in uh, the bread mold called Neurospora crassa and what they provided us the important insight that one gene is responsible for the function of a particular enzyme though this concept is not that much of important nowadays because we know uh, multiple genes are required sometimes to produce many different protein products in that case so usually this is a foundation and the idea of uh, the molecular uh, enzymology that one gene is coding one enzyme and in a series of pathways of a chemical reaction in series of metabolic pathways for example many enzymes are related many enzymes are required and the production of many enzymes are related to many different genes because one gene will produce one enzyme so if anyhow the expression of one enzyme one gene is blocked then the production of uh, enzyme will be halted so the activity of enzyme won't be there and there will be some block to the metabolic pathway so this is the overview of Biddle and Tatum now they've done the experiment using remember I've told you in 1942 Biddle and Tatum have done it using the mold called Neurospora crassa and this mold you can see it can uh, the life cycle of mold can be of asexual reproduction as well as sexual reproduction they can pass through this asexual reproduction uh, in using conidia and sexual reproduction in this case using ascospore right so they use this neurospora crassa they take this conidia of neurospora crassa and what they did in this case they try to find out and they've thought a very uh, important experiment that is if they mutate a part of gene if they mutate one gene then definitely in the cascade of enzyme reactions if one gene of the from the middle if they mutate that gene the enzyme responsible for the production of that uh, by that gene will be blocked so the whole cascade of events will be stopped and finally we are they are going to see the outcome of it right so this is the idea but by uh, Biddle and Tatum and what they did here they took this uh, bread mold and they found that uh, this growth of this bread, bread mold required three major important uh, things one it is required uh, minerals or salts inorganic salts second thing they require is a carbon source like glucose or fructose anything like that and third thing they required in this case is a vitamin but they didn't know what vitamin they used to use now if we provide these three things this neurospora crassa grow finely now what they produce in that case they took some neurospora crassa and they took the conidia of that neurospora crassa and they they put some u x-ray radiation there once they put the x-ray to those and this x-ray we all know at 1942 we all know that x-ray is a dangerous uh, mutagenic agent so it can change uh, the course of nucleic acid inside uh, that spore so as it is changing it it can cause some mutation so due to that mutation those uh, some of those, those spores are becoming fragile so that they cannot go grow in the absence of type of vitamins and those type of muta mutants are called oxotroph 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 means uh, mutants of a type which cannot grow in the absence of one or two different important uh, materials like for example except for uh, vitamins or uh, amino acids sometimes many things now in this case what they did they produce those kind of oxotroph type of material now once they produce this oxotroph uh, those oxotroph will uh, now cannot be grown in except for some vitamins so what they find that they didn't know that oxotroph whether they are uh, vitamin oxotroph or amino acid oxotroph or mineral oxotroph they didn't know that to notice that what they did here they took uh, different plates different plates for the growth of neurospora and what they put with one they put the whole media whole media will contain everything that is required for the oxotroph for growth and then they take they take a media of carbon source plus uh, carbon source plus salt this thing is common to all uh, and they one they put carbon source plus salt only they put carbon source 
plus vitamin and they put carbon source plus or say they yeah so they put this three th three important things here so once it, they took this and they put a uh, whole media they put a carbon source plus salt they put a carbon source plus vitamin and try to see whether the blade mold can grow on this media or not and usually in whole media there is normal growth that was observed and in carbon source plus salt there is no observable growth in case of carbon source plus vitamin there are, there is a growth of neurospora crassa so by looking at it they can tell yes vitamin is a very important thing that is not present in this plate that's why no growth is observed but vitamin is present in that plate so it is required so they must require some vitamin for that right that means those Oxotrophs that they produce by X-ray radiation are vitamin oxotrophs because once X-ray is introduced, they lose the capability of producing vitamins inside. As a result of that, they are not able to grow vitamin-less growing plate, right? So it is telling them there is a gene inside this uh, Neurospora crassa that is required for synthesis of vitamin, right? Now, to be more specific, they just exclude everything and take this example of vitamin and they want to check what is that vitamin required for their growth. And it was found to be thiamine or thiamine is that vitamin uh, that is required for the growth of Neurospora crassa. Depending upon the same type of experiment, they took the carbon source plus they put one vitamin in each plate and try to see in which plate they have a growth. And they found that whenever the plate is thiamine is provided and there is the growth of Neurospora crassa. That means thiamine is required for the growth of Neurospora crassa. And why it is blocked in other regions? Because normally, uh, normally in general case of Neurospora crassa, they can easily grow on every plate without any vitamin or everything because they are of wild type but once they eradicate them with x-ray as a result of that there triggers a mutation and due to the mutation one gene responsible for the production or biosynthesis of thiamine is blocked or is damaged or is mutated as a result of this mutation neurospora crassa of that type is not uh, able to produce that th thiamine on its own so as a result of that they cannot grow right so using these experiments they can tell there is a gene so there is a gene in neurospora crassa responsible for production of thiamine right so according to a, so by doing these experiments they can conclude that one gene is responsible for the production of a particular protein product particular enzyme product not actually enzyme in this case always because thiamine is an amino acid but the production of thiamine is done by other enzymes now the, those enzymes are not being produced due to the uv x-ray irradiation of those uh, of those neurospora crassa right so that's why they conclude the one gene one enzyme hypothesis and this hypothesis is a basic foundation that i've told you about molecular en uh, en enzymology and this is it about the Biddle and Totten experiment and I hope that's helpful guys. Thank you.